Hey, what's up guys? Books Nelson here back with another video and we're going to be going through this Team USA Invincible collection. So right off the bat, you guys know I'm not super excited about this. I don't think this is a good idea and you can see just from looking at this picture exactly why it's not a particularly good idea. And really it just comes down to the fact that what's good at the end of the year in 2K is not what's good on a real life Team, team USA roster which has many, many smaller point guards um, and normal sized wings as well. But maybe they will prove me wrong with these cards. I will ask one question though. What is the difference between an invincible and a 100 overall? Can anyone tell me that? Maybe I'm missing something, but I cannot tell the difference between an invincible and 100 overall. I don't know what that, I don't know what, like if you were describing, okay, an invincible overall is 99 everything and 100 overall is 99 everything. What's the what's the actual difference between the two? That haven't been said. Chris Bosh. Okay, so I have Chris Bosh's Dark Matter on my No Money Spent team. And I, I like Chris Bosh, actually. I like Chris, Chris Bosh quite a bit, 6'11". Uh, he can technically play both positions. Obviously, you get you, you, not well, uh, maybe the invincible you won't get dogged out at the center position. With the dark matter, you would, uh, but he I, he'll probably be able to hold his own at six eleven seven three wingspan. His shot is not elite, but I do find it to be very makeable, and I'm I'm quite used to it at this point. Nikola Jokic hop jumper is excellent. Let's go. In fact, let's go ahead while we're here. Let's compare him to the dark matter and see what's different. So the main thing um, is that the shot is the same, right? So that puts a cap on just how much better he can be. So, uh, so he gets pretty significant upgrades across the board. You see, statistically, Chris Bosch's Dark Matter was a little bit worse than a lot of the Dark Matters who were kind of close to 99 overalls in a lot of ways. Like, like the Ryan R test is pretty close. Um, Chris Bosch had a lot of ground to make up, and they made up that ground here with the card. Uh, Slashing-wise, he's pretty close, but and shooting-wise, it, it, it's really just a three-pointer with, with a coach and a shoe. That's not that big of a deal either. So even though there are a lot of stat upgrades, I don't know if you if it feels that different. You know, and maybe just because the 99 overall is like a break point to where things feel incredible. But if you've used a bad 100 overall in this game, like Jerry West or Jalen Brown, you know that th those 99 overall stats can't really save you. But let's see animation wise, did he get anything crazy? Uh, from pro escape to trailing escape, he definitely needed that. Because he's a card that would move well if he had better SIGs. Unfortunately, that's the only SIG they changed. Now, it's a big one. Well, they changed the Kyrie Irving Jordan style. So those are two big upgrades that do make him move better. And him being able to get to that Nikola Jokic hop jumper is a good thing. Even though he had a really good hop jumper before. And the Pro 2 Leaner is a nice upgrade as well. So yeah, you know what? Even though he doesn't get an elite shot... I'm still going to give this card an overall thumbs up. He's solid in the game right now. I don't think he's incredible. And I do think that there are several power forwards who are better than him that aren't 100 overalls. Like, like say, a Chet Holmgren. I expect Chet to still be better than this Chris Bosh. Maybe I'll be wrong about that. But I would probably play Chet over this guy if you had like a Chet Holmgren or, so, or one of those currently elite Guys, um, even, I don't know, even a guy like Hakeem, I'm, I'm, I'm still curious if he's better than Hakeem. But I do think this is a good card who, you know, if you get the card, you can absolutely play this card and probably play him for most of the rest of the year. The only negative being there's going to be a card that's just like this that's just going to have better animations and probably a better shot base. And I mean, there are cards like that now, but I'm saying one that's like even pretty easy to get. Bam out of the bayou. Uh, problem with Bam, he's 6'9 at the, at the power forward spot. So we're talking about a triple threat card for most people. Most people are not going to play a 6'9 power forward. Um, I think there are some cards that are so good offensively that you can run them. And some cards at 6'9 play above their size. I don't know if I would say Bam is in that category. Like you look on paper, 6'9, 7'2 wingspan, 255, you'd think so. But I've played with BAM cards this year, and they're solid, but they don't feel anything like, say, a Rodman card who plays way above his size. That Bill Russell card, I still say to this day, defensively, that guy performs out of his mind. I haven't gotten that sense from BAM out of bio, and he's got the same jumper, 
Pro 2 Leaner with Nikola Jokic Hop Jumper is a gorgeous combination. Again, the James Harden behind the back. He moves decent, but not like amazing. Carmelo Anthony size up is nothing to write home about. We'll go ahead and look at him compared to his next best card. So same thing, Trey Escape upgrade, but other than that, he's, you know, and again, Kyrie Irving over Kobe Bryant dribble style is a lateral move. Kobe Bryant dribble style is fantastic. And if you like Kobe's dribble style more, I know exactly why you like it more. The leaner and the Jokic hop jumper are cool, but at the end of the day, his jumper is just not fast enough. I don't think this card plays, to be honest with you. I don't think this card plays any more than this card plays. Um, attributes wise, he's got some nice upgrades across the board, but nothing that I think you really feel because opals are highly, you know, the, the attributes on opals are high. So it's not like you're going from mid or low 80s in most categories. It's just from a three point shot. And because everything else is already good, you can just throw a shoe in that three pointer and get it pretty close to that 99 anyway. But with his shot form, it's just not going to be there. So Kawhi Leonard following the trend, the shot's going to be the same. And Listen, spoiler alert, when you, you, if you go to his Dark Matter, as much as I've loved Kawhi throughout the year, once cards got the sped up jumpers, I feel like Kawhi slid back because other cards caught up to him defensively, but offensively, he felt more limited. Now, do I think this card's going to be pretty good? Yeah, he'll be pretty good, but he doesn't, he's got the same moving step back. That hurts him a lot because... That's one of the ways that he could really, really create because off of this Trey Young, <clears throat> his shot's just not fast enough for him to really shoot. Again, Pro 2 Leaner, he already had the Pro 2 Leaner. He was already good at leaners. This card is honestly kind of mid, in my opinion. Not even kind of mid. I think he's pretty mid because if we look at his attributes, he ha he's one of the, so this is a great example of a Dark Matter who had extremely high attributes like across the board. She's talking about passing vision and stuff like that. And shot IQ, like if you look at the double digits, it's in places post hook, standing dunk, shot IQ, passing vision, right? Pa passing IQ. These are, you know, intangibles. This is like fake. You look at defensively, he's the same card defensively, literally the same card defensively. Um, athletically, he was already very close. This is the same card. This is basically a duplicate card. As a shooter, his shot base would have to change because he's going from a 96.3 to a 90. Uh, nine three is not is not anything theoretically you feel that but so let me explain this i always say like when it comes to certain attributes some attributes as you go from 98 99 you feel it right i think strength is like that you, you play with a 96 strength you play with a 99 strength i feel like you can tell the difference i feel like three-point shooting is the same but it doesn't affect you on regular catch and shoot shots regular catch and shoot shots are going to basically be the same kind of across the board now when people start contesting those shots those higher ratings will matter on catch and shoot shots but really you're talking about can i create off the dribble can i shoot leaners behind a three-point line can i do step backs behind a three-point line can i you know l2 cancel and do behind the backs behind the three-point line and so when you don't have those animations either because your shot base doesn't shoot well off the dribble or because you don't have the dribble animations, then the 99 is kind of a waste of time because the kind of three-point shots that you're getting aren't affected by that 99 three-pointer. Yes, you'll be able to shoot from a little farther away, a little more comfortably, but again, when you have a 96 three ball and you throw a shoe on there and it's a 99 anyway, what are we talking about? I will go as far as to say, I think this card is gonna feel closer to his dark matter than the other two cards we looked at, right? I'm not that Bam had a dark matter. I think Chris Bosch, because his, his one of his flaws was his stats just weren't nearly as good as the rest of the dark matters. So this is a bigger stat jump. But th but this Kawhi Leonard, I same picture, right? This is the, the Spider Man meme. They're they're pointing at each other. I don't think you feel the difference between these two cards. If you get this card and you play with both of them and you do, let me know. Let me know what you feel is really different. Uh, the 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 significant difference is this Nicole Jokic hop jumper, but because of his dribbles, I just think you have less ways to get to that than most other cars. Yeah, he's got Trey Escape, that's cool, but Tyrus Thomas is like, like it's a small forward position if you were playing him at the four, I mean at the three, Tyrus Thomas is every day, all day. Uh, Anthony Edwards, 
Let's look. We're, just, we're not going to spend time on Anthony Edwards because he's got the same shot, and it's just not good enough. I said at the end of the day, like all of this makes him fun. He's going to be fun at dunking and all of that stuff. But we know what Anthony Edwards cards are at this point. As you can see here, we've got several of them, including two Dark Matters. So giving him an Invincible is, is absolutely meaningless unless you change the base. Uh, so we're going to keep it moving from Anthony Edwards. Damian Lillard, same thing. We're not, we're not doing this. Like They just gave away free Dame. He's a 6'2 point guard without a shot base change. He's just, he's just another Dame card. Right, like we, I we've gone over enough Dame cards throughout the year that we don't have to, you know, beat this dead horse. Tim Hardaway, six foot tall point guard. Okay, they did give him Patty base, but they gave him quickly upper. I'm not a fan of Quickly's upper at all. Um, it's it's one of those jump scare jump shots, and on Patty base, I think that might be so fast and difficult. Maybe it'll be all right. But I don't know about that myself uh, because there's just not a lot of time to see that cue. And one of the things about Patty Bass that it's like everybody wants Patty Bass and then you get on Patty Bass, you go, oh, wow, this is like actually really fast. Like you have to really work with this to be able to do it. It's not just a, you know, oh, I put this jump shot base on and now I win every game. No, T-Mac Bass is like that. Patty Bass, ah, Patty Bass doesn't just make the game easier. It, it's you have to adjust to the skill level. And so when you give him a bad upper, like quickly, um, I, I think that might be a little more challenging. And again, at only six feet tall, the, the shot contest system on six feet, uh, six foot guards is pretty cruel. Like it's very, very, very easy to contest those shots. You're talking about somebody might be out there with point guard Kareem. Like, yeah, I don't care what base you give him. Um, you're not getting that shot off. You know what I mean? That's just, that's just brutal. I'm actually curious what the comment section has. Yeah, six foot, not a candidate, but he's six foot, six foot, six foot. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's that at the end of the day. He's six feet tall. Six feet tall is just too small in this game. Uh, and you know, I, I I don't think height rules the game the way it used to. I think six rules the game, but that's within reason. I think point guards, you don't want to be small in a six three. And um, at a center, it's the opposite. At a center, if you're taller than seven three, then height becomes a much bigger factor Every like inch over seven seven three that your card might be, you can really feel that. Okay, Tim Duncan, what's he got? So this is the Patty Mills version of Tim Duncan. This is obviously one of the very very best cards in the game. That Tim Duncan upper is actually quite popular on big men in my career, so we love that as well. I mean, this is a flawless card. We've seen this card before because he has a hundred overall. Actually, a little curious. What is the difference between? Uh, I just looked at the same card. Let's try this again. Um, Tim Duncan. Okay, there we go. What is the difference between these two cards? So it's so funny to me that the 100 overall has a 98.3. Like, I'm really curious how you even come to this 100 overall concept. Like, I don't like when things don't make sense. And it's like, how is it 100 overall if it's 99 everything, number one? And how is that different from an invincible, number two? And how is it you can be 100 overall and have stats that are a 98, number three? Um, but yeah, he's he's the exact same card. There's no difference between these two cards. Obviously, if for any reason you don't have a coach closing the gap here, he's only got a couple of stats that are below 99, so you can put a shoe plus one on everything, and they are literally identical cards. So whatever you thought about this, Tim Duncan, you feel the same about this, Tim Duncan. Cool, cool. Shreve Abdul Rahim, this is an interesting one. But what shot did they give him? So, okay, so he's got the same shot. It's fine. I think it's the same shot. Let me look at this. Let's take this comparison. So I'm reasonably familiar with this shot because I use this card. And he, he was a good card at the time that he came out. Uh, he was definitely a good card. Obviously, massive over, overhaul from the dribbling standpoint. Uh, he's still got normal leaner, but he does get Nikola Jokic hop jumper. You see, he looks fine. He looks fine. Uh, right now, because Tyrus Thomas is, is available in the market, <clears throat> when I see a small forward who's around that 6'9 height, I'm comparing him to Ty Tyrus Thomas. It's like, do you just get Tyrus Thomas and be cool at that position probably for the rest of the year? Or do you, um, you know, are you pulling for one of these cars, trying to get one of these cars, whatever, rewards, however you're getting them? Or do you care about that? Now, if you get this card, is he a W? I don't know. Tyrus Thomas is so much better 
like his release is so much better. Like, yeah, size wise, they're close. Uh, Sigs wise, I mean, even this card with the James Harden step, I'm gonna call. I'm actually gonna call this card an L. I'm gonna call this card an L. He's outdated. He's absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. Average. Um, you know, small forward, whatever. Like, but at the end of the day, if you're if you're a guard or a wing, shot base is a premium attribute. Premium attri- attribute, and, and he just doesn't have an elite shot base. He has Paul Millsap base uh, versus, uh, I think, was it Ben Shepard and Kobe that the Tyrus Thomas is bringing to the table? No comparison. Mitch Richmond, uh, what shot does he have? So he's got Robinson Gorgian. Robinson's base is actually a good base for a big. I don't know how it plays on very quick with this upper, but you know I'm sure Mitch is fine. He's six five, so he's a little bit on the undersize. He does have a stocky build, and I don't know if I'd say long arms, but he doesn't have small arms the way some of those guys have. But Steph Curry behind the back, that's just not going to cut it, right? That's just not going to cut it at six five. Curry slide, you can get away with it on really tall cards, but it doesn't create enough separation. So the smaller cards, uh, we do love the Chris Paul moving step back. We love that Kemba escape. But this has to be Jamal Murray at the point guard position if you're going to be under 6'7". If you're under 6'7 and you don't have the Jamal Murray behind the back, I don't want to hear it at this point in the year. It's, it's like a month and a half left in the game's life. So, you know, no. It's not happening, Mitch. Penny Hardaway. Uh, so speaking of 6'7 cards, so we know what Penny's bringing to the table. Uh, he has, you know, the same stuff he's always had. Let's see if he's any different from his um, dark matter. It's interesting. They do call him Penny Hardaway as opposed to Anthony Hardaway. That's just, you know, a little surprising. So, yeah, so he gets uh, Pippen base with Kobe upper. So this is very confusing because this is absolutely elite, right? And this is a massive, massive upgrade, just a massive upgrade. This is best point, And he gets looks like Murray because they wouldn't upgrade Harden to anything else. Maybe Halliburton, because that's also an excellent behind the back. I'm guessing this is Jamal Murray. But you look at all of these upgrades over here, and he already was a great card, already moved well. I actually like the Chris Paul over the John Wall. But if you like the John Wall better, I know exactly why. The snatchback is faster, more efficient. But I like the Chris Paul because the, it's uh, less risky. You don't get that You don't get that bad angle where you run out of bounds, where you hop like way out of bounds. So... um but yeah, I mean, great upgrades across the board. The look, you're looking at probably your best point guard in the game, in my opinion. Um, yeah, and nothing else to say about that. So Penny is a massive W. And um, this is almost like free card punishment. Right? <laughs> like he got the free Penny Hardaway. So like, well, we can't have you feeling too good about that. So let's go ahead and give him Kobe upper with uh, Scottie Pippen base and upgrade his already very good animations to the elite of the elite at every single slot. Uh, including Kobe moving crossover, which was already excellent. Although he does still keep Michael Jordan dribble style, which is interesting. They didn't go to Kyrie. But again, if you watch this channel, I think between Kyrie, Kobe, and Michael Jordan, I don't think there's necessarily a better or worse. There are things about the Kyrie Irving dribble style that are great. But I think if you know how, if you know the proper tech with Kobe and with Michael, you can be just as effective as the Kyrie. If you want that proper tech, Look right here on this channel for that info. Uh, look at, what do I call it? The new best move in the game, something like that. Um, you'll see that video. So anyway, and DeMar DeRozan. This guy absolutely sucks because he has the same old jumper. Not, not going to get into him, you know, and he's got pro, through, pro 3 leaner, which is crazy. So this is the easiest one to get, I think, because it's just 50 clutch time wins. And for that reason, he's absolutely awful. Awful card. Uh, does not play over many, many, many of the free cards available in the game. You want to talk about a card I'd play every single day of the week over this guy? It is this guy right here, who I really should have done a video about, to be honest with you. Six, seven, better animations across the board. Uh, just an absolutely fantastic card. Can play at the highest level. But really, that Ricky Davis, that 40 token Ricky Davis, just dog walks this card every, all day, every day. So yeah, this card absolutely stinks. Almost like they made him bad on purpose. Penny and Tim Duncan are elite. And honestly, outside of Penny and Tim Duncan, the rest of these cards are either mid or flat out don't play. In fact, I don't think any of them really play. I think Chris Bosch can play if you need to make that happen. 
I think Kawhi plays as much as his Dark Matter plays and not a hair more. And the rest of these guys, I think there are either free or available cards that I would play every day over these cards. So yes, Penny's a massive W. Tim Duncan's a massive W. But the rest of these cards, uh, you can miss me with the rest of this collection. And it's no surprise. Uh, I, I would say the unfortunate thing is what they did to Penny. They could have easily done to Anthony Edwards. And at 6'4", it's very easy to make a card that people want to buy over this Ant Edwards if he just has like Ben Shepard base or something, you know, or, or just Kobe upper or something like that. Like you could have improved his jump shot. Like, like clearly there's no rhyme or reason because Penny got a complete overhaul and Penny is already so good. Like out of all of these cards, if none of them got you, we're going to skip Duncan because he's copying his 100 overall. But if the rest of these cards, if everybody didn't get an overhaul, Penny would still be the best one. Right? Like, he was the one who needed the overhaul the least out of everyone. You could argue Kawhi. Um, although, no, I won't even say that because his, his snatchback and stuff like that, like, he needed those things to be better, right? His behind the back. He needed those to be improved. Penny is totally fine. Total, not even playable. Very good. Well, very good point guard. And they turned him from, the, from a very good point guard to one of the best, to possibly the best point guard in the game. And now you look at these cards who were already either not playable or barely playable in their forms, they could have brought them up to solid, right? They could have brought them up to, oh, yeah, that card's pretty good if you're a fan of that player. But right now, even if you're the biggest DeMar DeRozan fan in the world, even if you're a Miami Heat fan, don't play this Bam out of bio. Like, please, don't do it to yourself. Like, there's, there's so many better cards, free, you know, or easily attainable that you could get over this Bam card. Um, again, Chris Bosh is fine. But Dame, Hardaway, and these cards don't play at all. And that's going to be it for this, for this breakdown. Uh, very confusing collection because you see they're willing to change a card. And they could have done what they did to Penny, to everyone. And these guys, all of them, don't have, with the exception of Kawhi at the two, they don't have the size to dominate their position. So they could have given them even 50% of the treatment that they gave to Penny. And I would have been much more excited about this collection. But as it is, these are mostly like, it's almost like the challenge of how bad can you make a 99 everything card, right? Like this is the how much do animations matter challenge? How much does height matter challenge? And it matters a lot. And that's what you'll find out if you try to play any of these uh, stinky <laughs> Team USA cards that aren't named Penny, Tim, uh, Kawhi, or Chris Bosh. I think the rest of these cards absolutely flush. And that's going to be it for me, guys. Uh, hopefully, this was helpful or useful in some way. And um, for those of you pulling packs, whichever one of these uh, are special inserts, I hope you got good ones. I don't remember if there are any of the good special inserts in there. I think maybe Tim might be in there. But, uh, but yeah, so good luck to all of you doing that stuff. And let me know what your experience is with these cards. Did I underrate anybody? Are you finding success with a uh, six foot tall Tim Hardaway? Or do you find that Bam's size isn't as much of a factor as I'm making it out to be and his jumper is good enough? Let me know if I'm wrong because I want to know if I'm barking up the wrong tree with my extremely critical view of 2K's late game content here. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. I will see you all in the next one. Please like and subscribe if you have not already. And peace.